Hello, statistics students. We're going to start a new section on correlation. Let's get started. So I just need to share my screen with you here. And we'll talk about correlation. <clears throat> yes, I still have my corona cough. So in algebra, we learned that you had x and y, and x was your independent variable, the variable you generally get to choose, and y is the dependent variable. It depends on the value you choose for x. Well, we've already learned that independent and dependent have different meanings in statistics. So we call x the explanatory variable and y the response variable because it responds to changes in x. <laughs> Excuse me, I still have my corona cough. So um, the best example I come up with is calories eaten versus weight gain. If you were to plot that on a graph, calories eaten would be the explanatory variable and the more calories you eat in theory, the more weight you would gain. So your weight gain would be the response variable. So in this section where we're talking about correlation, generally we're talking about scatter plots. Um, points that have an X and a Y value. And what we wanna know is given this set, of x, y points, <clears throat> how linear is that data set? In other words, does that data set kind of sort of seem to form a line or is that data set uh, doing something else? Now we have different way, how might we measure how linear a data set is? We need some number. We need some value because we can't just eyeball it. You might look at a data set and say, I think it's very linear. And I would look at it and say, you're a cuckoo bird. So we need a number and that number is called the correlation coefficient. And we use the lowercase r to represent a correlation coefficient. And r is a measure of how linear a data set is. And r is a number that varies from negative one to positive one. If R, your correlation coefficient, is exactly negative one, then your data points are on a line. They are perfectly linear, and that line has a negative slope. If your data point, if your correlation coefficient is positive one, then all of your points are exactly on a line with a positive slope. So your correlation coefficient is going to be some number for every data set, some number between negative one and positive one inclusive. The closer your correlation coefficient is to plus or minus one, the more linear the data set is. Um, conversely, the closer it is to zero, um, the less linear your data set is and hence the less predictive your regression line is. In other words, that line that we're going to try to pass through the data set because we're talking about data being linear, we're going to do that because we want to know, we want to make predictions for different values of x, what would y be? If r is close to zero, then those predicted values are not going to be um, very helpful to us. So let's look at some graphics that are out of the um, current textbook. And I'll show those in just a moment. If I could find. Um, not sure what I'm doing here. I'm just going to keep on going. So on page 470 of the textbook, You can see that these data points, generally speaking, as X gets bigger, Y gets smaller. So these data points have a negative linear correlation. We say it's a linear correlation because, yeah, you could pass a line through there, and those data points 
form what I like to call a data cloud around the line. Um, they're all hovering around that line, so it's data sets linear. Similarly, here is X looks bigger, Y gets bigger. So these data points are linear. <clears throat> here, this would be a data set where there is a, an R value of close to zero. After all, where would you put a line through this? Would you put it like this? Would you put it like this? Would you put it like this? It's hard to say what would be a good line through that data set. So I would say that there's no correlation there. Here, there's definitely a correlation. There's something going on with that data set. It just doesn't happen to be linear. So our the way we're going to calculate R, the correlation coefficient, isn't going to be helpful for a data set that looks like this. This is why you must always, always, always plot your data before calculating R. And as these lessons continue, you'll see why. <laughs> so, here we have some different data sets and we want to talk about different R values. These points, every one of these points is on the line Y equals 7X. Those data points are perfectly linear. So this has a correlate, this data set has a correlation of positive one. This is still a strong linear relationship. If we're to run a line through there, you can see that in general, not every single time, because right here it looks like as X gets bigger, you got some points getting smaller. But in general, as X gets bigger, Y gets bigger here, um, you would have a strong po uh, positive correlation. Here, if we were to put these data points into our correlation coefficient formula, which I haven't given you yet, we'll find out that this has an R value of 0.45, which is weak. There is no exact hard and fast rock uh, written in stone um, boundary between what is strong and what is weak. When I give you tests and quizzes, it will be very obvious as something is strong or weak. I wouldn't give you a correlation coefficient of say 0.65 and you can ask you whether that's strong or weak. That's just not fair. Um, strong and weak is in the eyes of the beholder. But I would hope that if you had a correlation, you know, above 0.8, you would consider that strong. And if you had a correlation coefficient of less than one half, you would consider that weak. Okay, so those were positive correlations. Let's talk about negative ones. All of these data points are on the line y equals negative 3x plus 100. Since they are perfectly on a line with a negative slope, they have a correlation coefficient of negative 1. Um, I think it's pretty clear here that not every single data point, because obviously as you go from this data point to this one, X got bigger and Y got bigger. But in general, we see the trend that as X gets bigger, Y gets smaller. So that is still a negative correlation coefficient for the entire data set. And that's a pretty strong one. It's pretty close to negative one. Here's a no correlation. This one has a correlation of positive 0 0.04, which for predictive purposes is useless. If I wanted to know what would Y be, what would the height in inches be if someone's IQ score was 104, well, what is this data point or what is this data set going to um, predict? Would it predict here, 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 here? Wherever it predicts, you can see it's just not going to be a very good prediction. So a correlation coefficient close to zero isn't going to help us much at all. So let's figure out how do we calculate 
a correlation coefficient. This is the formula that's in your textbook. And I know as soon as you see sigmas, some of you, yee, I don't know what to do. <coughs> Not to panic. If you have one of the blue TI-30 calculators that we use in class, you might remember that when we entered data points into our TI-30s and we went through and um, did two variable data, we might be able to get a slope and a y-intercept, and sure enough, we would. It also told us um, sigma xy. In other words, for every data point, it multiplied the x-coordinate times the y-coordinate and then added those up and multiplied by the number of data points. Here, we added up all the x's, we added up all the y's, and we multiply those together. Keep in mind, that's very different from this sigma term. Anyway, there's a formula, and if you had a TI-30 or similar calculator, you would be able to get all of these sigma values out of your calculator. One more thing I want to point out. Sigma x squared means take each x, square it, and then add up all those squares. This sigma x quantity squared means add up all the x's and then square that sum. So this one is the sum of the squares. This is the square of the sum. And similarly here. There is a handout um, for this lesson. It's available on the stats files page of my website. And it's called the correlation coefficient handout. If you haven't um, gotten that handout yet, either in class or by downloading it, pause the video now and get that handout. Here's, a, here's the formula at the bottom of the handout. You'll notice it's slightly different in, um, in the handout, or I'm sorry, in the textbook, it multiplies the numerator by n and the denominator by n, and there was a slight difference in how these formulas were written. Yeah, if you do a little bit of um, algebra, you'll find out it's the same thing. Please do not at all worry about this formula. We will have nothing to do with the formula here. And we're just, we're just not gonna do it. So as I stated, <coughs> The formula at the bottom of the handout is the same as the formula on, um, in our textbook. Here's the formula. Again, this is the version from the handout. This is the one I like to use. I don't like the textbook one as much. So um, what I explained earlier was here are all your data points. Here's your first data point, x1, y1. Here's your second data point, x2, y2, et cetera. To find the correlation coefficient of these data points, You'd go x1, y1, plus x2, y2, plus x3, y3, et cetera. You'd add all those up all the way down to x, m, y, n. That would give you this number. Then you would take the sum of all the x's. That would go here. The sum of all the y's. That would go here. Divide by n. Now, you that's the numerator. What we're going to divide by is these two radicals. <clears throat> we're going to take um, this squared plus this squared plus this squared all the way down to this squared. That's this number. We're going to take this plus this plus this plus this plus this all the way down to here. Square that. That's this number. Divide by n. Then we're going to do the same with the y's. 
we're going to go this squared plus this squared plus this squared all the way down to this squared. That gives me this number. And then for the sum of the y's, I'm going to add up all the y's, and then I'm going to square that entire sum and divide by n. On top of the handout, there is another way of calculating a correlation coefficient. And on a quiz, I'm going to have you do it both ways. You need to find a way if you don't have one of those calculators to get all the sigmas for you. Hopefully, um, StatCrunch will do that or some other statistical uh, software package that we'll use in the future. And um, I owe you an answer on whether we can do that. So here is another way of calculating the correlation coefficient. <clears throat> now you should notice a similarity here. What does X, a data point minus a mean divided by a standard D sound like? Something we've learned in the past. What does that sound like? If you said that that sounds like a z-score, then we agree. So um, I often call this z sub x because it's a z-score for the x data points. So you take each data point minus the average of the x's and you divide it by the standard div of all the x's. Well, where do you get x bar and s sub x? Well, in class, we would do that on our TI-30s. We would enter all the... Um, data into the calculator and then we'd go to stat variables scroll through um, all of those um, variables that the calculator gives us and it would give us x bar and the standard d the sample standard d of all of those x's this also looks like a z-score it's a z-score for each data point but only in the y's you could take each y value subtract the mean divide by the standard d and then divide by n minus one. I do not expect you to memorize that formula. However, I do expect you to be able to use that formula given a data set and that formula written down. <laughs> so here's how we would calculate R, the correlation coefficient of a data set using that um, alternate method with disease. So let's just say I have three data points, and here they are, point 0.11, the point 0.24, and the point 0.34. Now we should be able to draw a straight line through those three points, and all three of those points would be pretty close to that line because there's only three. <coughs> so, if I were to find the average of these three data points, it's two. And I find the average of these three y coordinates, I'm sorry, if I find the average of these three x coordinates, it's two. And if I find the average of these three y coordinates, it's three. If I were to um, use a calculator of some type, the standard d of the x's, so s sub x is one, the standard D of these three Y values, S sub Y, is approximately 1.732. So I'm gonna use a table format. You might remember back in the good old days when we used a table format to calculate um, standard D. We're gonna use a table format to calculate the correlation coefficient. So I take one <clears throat> minus the mean, minus two is negative one, divided by S sub X. See, I don't think you can see the mouse on my screen, so let's try this again. I'm going to take the data point X sub one, which is one, minus two, which is negative one, and I'm gonna divide that by S sub X, and I get negative one. Here I get two minus the mean is zero, divided by one is zero. Three minus the mean is one, divided by one is one. So those are my z sub x's.
Now let's do the same thing for z sub y. If you're using a um, one of the blue calculators from class, or if you have a calculator at home and know how to do this, remember, you don't need to memorize this number and this number or write it down and type it in each time. Just pull it out of the calculator's memory um, stat variable for the blue calculators we use in class. So, one minus three is negative two, divided by this number gives us this z sub y. Same for these two values. How do we get them? Now the formula, if you go back to your handout, the formula says multiply this number times this number, multiply this number times this number, this number times this number, and then it says add them up. So this plus this plus this, you add them up, and you divide by n minus one. So in other words, this plus this plus this divided by two gives me a correlation coefficient of 0.866, which is a strong linear relationship, strong positive linear relationship, which you would expect looking at this graph and how close the data points are and how close to each other and how close they are to the um, to the line itself. Later on, we'll get to, well, what's the equation of that line and how do we graph it? Alrighty, I have two more slides and then we're done with this video. So how does that formula work? Well, it works this way. Think of putting a new set of coordinate axes on the point X bar, Y bar, which is the point, um, the average of the X's and the average of the Y's. Now, anything above and to the right of that, your Z score is gonna be positive. Your, I'm sorry, anything to the right of this point, your Z sub X is gonna be positive because it's greater than the mean. Anything above the X axis, Z sub Y is going to be positive because it's a, the Y coordinate is above the mean of the Y's. So here, X and Y, the Z scores are gonna be greater than zero. So when you multiply them, you get a number greater than zero. Similarly, down here in the third quadrant, your Z score for the X's will be negative, the Z score for the Y's will be negative, you multiply them and you get positive. So you should be able to see that if all your data points relative to X bar, Y bar are in these two quadrants, you definitely have some type of positive relationship going. Similarly, here, your, the product of your Z scores is gonna be negative. Here, the product of your Z scores will be negative. If all of your data points are in these two quadrants, you're definitely going to have some type of negative relationship um, between the data points. You're going to have a negative correlation. Also, if you have most of your data points in these two quadrants, again, relative to this point, but you have a couple up here and a couple of down here, that's going to lower your sum because you're going to be adding all these positive numbers here and then adding some negative numbers here. And obviously that's going to lower your R value a little bit. <clears throat> some data points, some data sets though, have a zero correlation um, coefficient, like this one. Let me uh, blow that up and zoom in a bit. If you want to try this, either use your own calculator or you can go to StatCrunch and give it a shot on correlation. Um, put in data points in a rectangle. Now, just think of it geometrically. What would be the best fit line through those data points? Would it be this green one that goes right through the center? What about this um, yellow one that goes through these two data points and then these two are just kind of out there in what I call the data cloud? Or how about this purple one that goes through these two? You can make a legitimate um, 
visual argument for any of those three lines, but that doesn't do us any good in mathematics. So we definitely need a way of determining what is, or first off, how linear a data set is. And then second, once we say it's linear, well, what is that line that is the best fit line? In a couple of lessons, we'll determine how to get that best fit line. Until then, review the video, review this section of the book, and have a great day.